everyone, Jane Applegath here, founder of the Epic Vision Zone, Conversations That Inspire. Each show we offer you an inspiring person or message to bring you closer to your big dream so that you can live your epic life now. Thank you for being here. And if you're listening to the audio version, be sure to follow the episode on your favorite app. And if watching on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Diana Hardy said, it only takes one voice at the right pitch to start an avalanche. Dr. Doreen Downing is a psychologist and an expert on how to overcome public speaking. Her passion is helping people find their voice by tapping into their authentic strengths so that they can overcome anxiety, be confident, and speak without fear. Having once suffered from stage fright and conquering it, she discovered being connected to your authentic self is the key to relaxed and confident speaking. Her career journey led her to realize that at the core of social problems were communication and relationship issues. From this knowledge, she found her calling to facilitate personal and professional transformation by helping people recover their vibrant inner spirit so that they can speak with confidence. Doreen now teaches others how to dissolve stage fright forever through private coaching speaking circles, fearless speaking workshops, and self-guided e-courses. In addition to coaching and online courses, she is also the author of The Seven Secrets to Essential Speaking, Find Your Voice, Change Your Life, a book that teaches you how to transform your anxiety with mindful presence and genuine connection. Welcome, Doreen. Thank you so much for being here today. <laughs> Thank you. I was listening to you and I went, yeah, that's true. You can transform your anxiety into a more natural presence. So thank you for the introduction. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I am so excited to delve into this. Doreen and I were just talking a little bit beforehand and it's, it's really exceptional the work that she does it helps us in so many ways so let's get started um what inspired you doreen to do the work that you do today i would say uh, that has many angles i could <laughs> i just have to trust that what i need to say today will come out because i would say that as a psychologist i've always been interested in the deeper nature that's within the potential that get, can get activated or doesn't get activated and you know with the phd in psychology I learned a lot about how people <laughs> are human behavior and how we get into uh, structures and behaviors that might have originated when we were really young. And then we carry that through life. And so that I would say that that's my first inspiration is what's inside of us that's so brilliant. And I think that early on in my training, it was like, what's wrong? But I have to tell you, I've always been way more sad, you know, fascinated by what's brilliant about what's inside of people, you know, mm -hmm. what makes them alive and what makes them happy and what makes them, oh, you know, the, the, the most potential that they can activate or manifest in the world. So I would say that's my answer to that question is that I just the curiosity and the love of what is naturally human nature. Hmm. Beautiful. I love that you said, I, it's not what's wrong with individuals yeah. because we are our own worst critics. Right. And we always think what's wrong with me. Why can't yes. I do that when others do, but, but rather focus on the positive and say, there's nothing wrong with you. We just need to explore and find your brilliance. So beautiful, absolutely love that. So public speaking anxiety, what causes this public speaking anxiety? Maybe you can delve into that a little bit for us because I know a lot okay. of us suffer from it. <laughs> yes, and I did too, Jane, mm -hmm. I did too. And this goes along partly with your first question around what what drew me to this was my own stage fright, my own suffering. I had a PhD in psychology from the University of California, Berkeley. I mean, of all things, you know, pretty prestigious here. And I had a successful private practice. But guess what? 
I hid that I was terrified of speaking up in front of not just public speaking, but what we might call uh, small group speaking, which I, I think is still public, right? And so that it's a whole nother story how I woke up one day and, and I'm not going to get into that, but basically it was a wake up call to say, Hey girl, you're, you're, you're working with other people and their fears and you're hiding your own. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I don't know whether it was courage or whether it was, Hey, I, I want to be more of who I can be. And I'm not doing that. I, you know, I did all this layering of, uh, being a professional, and I think it was a quote by Michelangelo that um, he chiseled until he set the angel free and he saw the angel in the marble. And that's what I felt like. I felt like PhD training, um, going through orals, going through dissertation, all that was the layering of marble. And my true spirit was locked inside. And that's where my voice felt like it was the outer voice. Hello, I'm Dr. Downing and I can help you, <laughs> you know, sit down. <laughs> so I think that, uh, so in a way, then what is public speaking is a fear or anxiety is I suffered. And mm. just going to something like Toastmasters to try and try and try and learn how to do a perfect beginning, middle, end, and how to do gestures and vocal variety um, was only, only took me so far until I realized I needed to do an inner journey. I needed to face my fear. I needed to go deep back into my own life where my mother was hospitalized for depression in and out. We stayed with my grandmother and she would always go, shh, be quiet or your mom's going to get sick and go back to the hospital. Now, is that a route to the fear of speaking up and expressing yourself? <laughs> so wow. that, and I have techniques that I work with people who, and I have lots of stories about early trauma or just, um, just in ways in which they didn't get seen and heard properly so that they could flourish early in life. So yeah, my approach is first find out as much as you can about the root. And if somebody has had a really sweet, wonderful, no problem, no dysfunction family, there's still challenges because you've heard my podcast where I interview people who have challenged finding their voice it doesn't, it still happens. Like something will happen in college or their first job and they're thrust into a situation where they're supposed to speak up and they freeze. So that's a, mm. that's almost like a trauma moment. It wasn't in childhood, but so it can happen anywhere along the line. And I think just to go back to what is anxiety, I think it's a disruption of our system and it takes us to a place where we don't want to ever go back. So we'll do anything to avoid it, like refuse to go to a party because you're going to be asked to give a toast or um, you know, show up at a meeting or something where you have to give a report. So yeah, it, it's, it's, it's good old fashioned anxiety and it can be helped. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, that, I, I, what I gathered from that right near the end, I felt like you said it's a disruption. It's a disruption of your core essence. So it takes yes. it offline. Mm -hmm. And when it takes it offline, you're in that fight or flight because you've mm -hmm. disrupted the connection. And absolutely, I could see that. Yes, because I've, I've had anxiety like that where I was in front of individuals making a speech and it wasn't a big crowd. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it's, well, I was just like, I couldn't speak. I was like, yeah, blubbering. <laughs> and like you yeah. said, where it came from, I have no idea. But um, thank mm -hmm. goodness I had my assistant there. So she kind of filled in till I got myself back together. Mm -hmm. But I think it's happened mm -hmm. to all of us at some point in our lives. 
Um, and uh, I thank you so much for opening up that door and um, you know, expressing to people that it is something that happens to the best of us. I believe even with professional speakers, I've heard okay. stories. Mm -hmm. So we're all very good at putting on the cover. Um, and like you said, yes. you put on the cover and, and you went down and said, yes, I hear I am, you know, Dr. Downing. And uh, yet um, mm -hmm. behind the scene, you were disconnected. So thank you for that. Well, here's mm -hmm. a really interesting question. When it comes to promoting yourself, the, what we call the elevator speech, you say to trust you know who you are and what you offer and speak mm. from the heart. So tell us about that because I feel that there is a big issue with mm. trusting ourselves and trusting that what we have to offer is not coming from just wanting that sale, but if we're true to who we are, it's really sharing our gifts to those we are here to serve. So maybe give us some insight into that, if you could, to trust our quote unquote elevator pitch. Oh, Jane, you, you pretty much just said it right then and there around uh, knowing who we really are in our essence and believing in our gifts. And I think that goes back to some of my you know the deep dive inquiry into childhood and what how because there are there are developmental phases and one of them is according to erickson trust and mistrust and you mm -hmm. you have to well it's not have to but you get to go through these developmental phases and you come out the other end with knowing a little bit about trust how to trust yourself, how to trust the universe around you. And so if you're in an environment that's, well, my father was alcoholic. So if there's a, there's a disruptive element in your environment, you can't trust that there is going to be stability. So I, I'm doing a little deeper dive in that response to your explanation. But so, but to come back to what you pointed to was the essence how do we take that journey to the essence of who we are how do we uh, and there's some really wonderful techniques you know like the going through a park and you meet the little girl or you go further and you meet the critical one standing up against a tree and then you go deeper and deeper and deeper until you meet you would say the essence or the spiritual mm -hmm. self or the soul and she or he has a message for you. What is that? And so that processes like that help you learn to identify when you are in that centered place and be able to open up. And I'll just say one more word that's really important to what you just said is listening. Who is listening? If the critic in you is listening or is the one who's curious, you know, are you the critic or are you the curious one? So. Oh, I love that. That is so vital. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. Because yes, depending on who is listening, it's going to affect the outcome. But that awareness is key to understanding. Uh, you, you know, once you're aware of that, which now I am, thank you very much. <laughs> you could say, now, wait a second, that's that's my critic that's that's listening. I'm going to change the channel, you know, mm -hmm. but until you're you understand that it is either the one that's curious or the critic, you're just you, your critic will just, you know, have a loud voice <laughs> and speak to you <laughs> and say, OK, I hear you, but I'm not going to do anything about it. <laughs> well, thank you so yeah. much for that. Yeah, really, yeah. really powerful. So this and that goes happens a lot. Go I was ahead. just going to say the way the way you described it, uh, the critic sounds like when I hear people talk about their childhoods and they've been bullied, you know, and then they grow up being really hard on themselves. They bully themselves. So that's that was a thought I just heard from what you said. Mm, the critic yes. who's really harsh. Absolutely. Mm. Self-bullying. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'd never thought of that. Wow. We've got yeah. so much we could unpack just from that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Wow, this is so yeah. rich. Well, introverts and public speaking. Now, can introverts be good at public speaking? I'm an introvert. 
really? <laughs> and I'm a keynote speaker. Are you an introvert or you see yourself as an extrovert? No, I see myself as an extrovert. I really, I, yeah. I, I feel like you are more introverted because of your depth and your awareness of uh, that internal uh, sense of ourselves. But anyway, so I could be both. back to the question. <laughs> Yeah, I am both actually. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Both. Well, yeah, no, for sure. I have to tell you that the people who are extroverted have a style and unfortunately we use them as the prime models of how we want to be. So the rest of us who have struggled, like me going to Toastmasters to try and be one of those kind of speakers that gets out and you know, can get on a stage and prance around and stomp my hand and ooh, you know that's that isn't true to my nature my nature is much quieter i'm calmer i want to radiate from my essence i don't want to be a dynamic speaker i want to be what i call a magnetic speaker that i draw people to me magnetically you know already i see you and i are connected and you and i are you know we're drawn to each other in such a way that you know that the listening that you give is a beautiful listening so it helps bring out more of the truth of what i what i'm saying and it goes along with uh, jane i think you make the world uh, a safer place for people i feel it mm -hmm. as i'm expressing myself spontaneously with you today i mean these weren't prepared questions i looked at them but i trusted that i would be responding to you not just the question but the you so mm -hmm. that's uh, i think introverts have actually i might say i i prefer them because they're more compelling <laughs> and they're magnetic and they they feel like they resonate more i love vulnerability more than mm -hmm. i do a kind of strength that feels like right. okay uh, i'm gonna do it anyway it's more like ah oh, i'm gonna do it anyway a different tone you can right. feel the two different tones i just mimic. yes thank you well my my interpretation of introvert and extrovert may be a little skewed then um, because I, I'm often very friendly with people. I will go up to strangers and say something mm -hmm. uh, that uh, see and I see an introvert as someone who would never do that. So I just, you're, mm -hmm. from your description though, yes, I would agree. Then I would be more of an introvert in the sense that, yes, I, I'm not, don't get up there and rah rah sis boom ba. But I love what you said that you're you want to be magnetic because that's drawing mm -hmm. people to you. And what that is, is that the energy within you is connecting with the energy from those around you, and yes. that is so much more yeah. powerful than speaking loudly at them, right? Mm -hmm. And I and yes, you mentioned with. vulnerability. Yes, exactly with them. Because vulnerability yeah. is really all about the trust. Trusting uh -huh. yourself and trusting that the audience uh -huh. is feeling you. Yeah. And that's being vulnerable. Yeah. 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 Well, oh, thank you so much. And it's thank you for your compliments. You gave me chills. I mean, I was just, <laughs> thank you so much. So moving on for this one, it is about what can people do then if they are hijacked by their nerves. That's exactly the word that I hear so often from clients that start working with me is that's the experience is being hijacked and then they feel overwhelmed and they can't um, function because it's just like an attack, an assault, which is true in a way. Panic is like an assault on your on your being. And uh, you said it earlier about a disconnect from the essence of who you are. Yeah, a lot of people just disassociate, get out of the body. So uh, you ask how it, I, I have many frames. There's several that I love. Uh, there's face there's embrace and in, and replace so face embrace and uh replace and that's from 
uh, somewhere along the line in my journey, I came across that and I can't uh, give credit to the person I heard it from. I think it was Billy Atwell. I, I was on his podcast a long time ago and he had a Fear Not, I think was his original podcast. But, you know, what about that whole idea of learning to face? And then you've I've got techniques, I showed you one earlier, about how to face. And then there's the whole idea and its embrace, which is acceptance and, and kind of holding the part of you that feels like really, you know, when we're young and we're scared and doesn't a, a, a hug or being held help us settle our nervous systems? So it's self-soothing. And then face means, okay, let's just face it. What's going on? And so that's one one system that I have as an arching, overarching way to move step by step easily, learning how to de do each step. <laughs> each step is, is like, what does replace really mean? Well, what does that mean for the person? And then there's a whole learning journey of what we talked earlier about how to reach the essence and the true voice within. Right. Well, thank you for those tools, because I know that um, you when you do get hijacked, it's a very disrupting sensation. Mm -hmm. And oh, it, yes. it usually hits you like a truck. You know, yes. You're not expecting it. And you're just blown away. <laughs> you know, and, and it's terrible because, you know, you feel like you have no control. Um, but you're right. That's you true. Have to, you, you, yeah. you don't. There is yeah. truth in that. And that's why, you know, I know what you, there's two ways to deal with it. One is to at least put yourself in enough kind of training that before you go there, I mean, it isn't that what any athlete does mm -hmm. before they run the race, they've done a lot of training. And so like training your body to get calm instantly, I would say is part of the training. We can talk about my first step, which is stillness, learning to still yourself and go into it just like that with a snap of a finger be able to recognize you know catch that anxiety as it's building and then do the whatever technique you've learned to to change the state from anxiety to calm wow mm -hmm. isn't that i mean if we if we had teachers, te well, we do have teachers teaching that now, mindfulness teachers in our schools, don't we, early on in early education and meditation. There are teachers who are teaching that nowadays, even just stress reduction exercises. Oh, boy, do we all need that today. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the, the world of unpredictability. <laughs> And yes. of course, our reptilian brain wants to have predictability because otherwise mm -hmm. it's the unknown and the unknown, the brain says, is unsafe. So you're absolutely right. We need to understand that we can create a calm within, even though if without is, is chaotic, right? Because yes. it all comes from within. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Now I have a question here. You've got what's the difference between eye contact and eye presence? I'm really curious. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorites of my seven secrets is uh, this way of making your eyes softly. In fact, anybody who's listening right now, I'm not going to do a hypnosis type thing, but just relax the sockets around your eyes. Take a breath and you'll notice that all of a sudden your vision changed. There's probably more that you got to see all of a sudden in your field of vision. There could be some, some way in which you uh, feel like the back of your neck and your shoulders might have dropped. Your forehead feels more relaxed because this, this, the eyes are so close to all that brain stuff, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you can learn to be fully here, more present is what I call it, is because actually the eye 
presence follows my second secret, which is presence. But being present right here in the now, softly opening your eyes, gently gazing at people as opposed to that eye contact, which to me has, I mean, you heard me, I'm just so soft. <laughs> So the hard edges of eye contact have never really worked for me. Or even like, look at somebody three seconds, another person three seconds, another person three seconds. It's more like softening your eyes, have a welcoming gaze, look gently at the people who are looking at you. And actually, you know, the, the, what, the eyes are the windows of what they say is the soul. So wow, I get to look at those jewels, you know, as opposed to, yeah. ooh, they don't like me. Oh, you know, focusing on the, the the negative thoughts that may or may not be there. I'm not saying they aren't there or, you know, you may be projecting, but this technique of being able to look at somebody's eyes and be able to see them as little sparkling jewels uh, is, I think, something that can be real transform. It has been real transformative for a lot of people. Mm. Perspective. Yeah. Mm. Everything is perspective. I mean, when you say that, it, it not only creates a different sensation, but it also enhances that magnetism. Yes. Because Good when point. people are, are looking from one to another to another, those sitting in the audience feel that they're not really being spoken to but spoken at right yeah, because again, they're just jumping with around this. right yes. exactly yes oh my gosh that thank you that is that is so insightful i had not never heard of that before so oh, relation yeah. no i never had and, and i do understand that the the visual cortex is i believe the most powerful um sense that we have in the brain because it does create all of those images for us it it has a whole story and history yeah. behind it which i find fascinating yes. so absolutely yes. what is the relationship between rational presence and how to apply it speaking in public okay We're, what the word is and i think uh, you're you're um, it, oh, it's relational but i yeah. i was just going to go r rational presence oh i could talk about that too although that's not <laughs> the brand <laughs> because yeah. uh oh, it, actually i'm just going to for one second kind of go there spontaneously is that rational sometimes is just like i for those who aren't watching my hand is at my neck and so rational means like everything above the neck and uh, presence is everything below what about if we integrate them that would be rational mm -hmm. presence right you know yes okay so anyway i just i went there but the the what i talk about is relational presence and that's the whole idea of learning how to be fully in this now moment not carrying the past whether it's the deep trauma stuff that i talked about earlier or whether it's just um, an event that's happened to you uh, last week and you fell apart in a meeting and you feel like you're going to get panicked again that's in the past and that's affecting your ability to be totally present in the here and now and you project into the future those who can't sleep for days or weeks before they know they're going to do a presentation uh, that's projecting into the future how to come back to the now and that's presence and then when you learn how to do that with everything in your life then when you're speaking, you begin to be present and in relation with the listener. Mm. Kind of like I feel that you and I are just really like tuning into each other and opening up to the now moment. I don't, I just feel like we both are dropping everything and just being, being together. Mm. And that is to me a quality of relational presence and then how to how that helps with anxiety is because this is just so much more delicious mm. it is so much more empowering and it's so much more the real you your voice has a different resonance when you're in your own presence 
your own essence and it radiates you know from a, a deeper more impactful way i would say mm -hmm. and then it, it you're like you're the messenger so if you m take your message and you gently with your soft gaze <laughs> deliver it to one person at a time in your audience it's like that's presence delivering it to somebody else's presence mm, absolutely <laughs> that was beautiful your presence yeah. delivering to another person's presence yeah. yeah we keep that in mind and our anxiety should calm down <laughs> really yes when we put it in those Absolutely. terms yes yeah. now you may have already answered this question but why can't people control their anxiety when they must speak in public yeah that goes back to what is the cause the underlying cause and if it hasn't been treated i feel like it's gonna be like a little munchkin back there ready to pop up so yes I, i've worked with people who uh, feel like they for the most part have um, overcome the anxiety but they still have the fear that oh it's going to show up anytime i'd like to go the full run all the way to oh if it comes up i know what to do and that the skill or the um, the ability to go into centered presence is always there so that they can call upon it should those little niggly ah, 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 fears start to arise so they can catch it, check it, and change it right then and there. Mm -hmm. um, why does it feel like you can't control it? Well, obviously because it's it, you can't. When that nervous system gets... The word you used earlier hijacked it's like you 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 really are like with the loop of the cane being dry dragged around and so it's learning how to stop breathe look in that soft way and listen that's a whole nother lesson i talk about is learning how to be the biggest listener in the room mm. So I think it's just those knowing knowing what to do when it happens yes. is is the key, and not so much that oh it can never happen, because it, it you never know, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, that's the thing is it it you don't know, and that's why it's called hijack because it just pops up. I mean, yes, I say that from experience mm -hmm. because you just be perfectly mm -hmm. fine. And then for whatever reason, boom, it's there. And when mm -hmm. you were speaking, what I thought of was you're offline. It's almost like uh, your computer is, uh -huh. you know, where we have all these interconnections within us and all these neurons that make, you know, that have uh, neural pathways. And I just thought of, wow, when you get like that, you've been not just hijacked, but you've, you're offline. It's yes. almost like you've been unplugged, Excellent. unplugged. Oh, right? yes, 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 yes. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the analogies I use is plugging into when I did used to do my in-person trainings soon back to do that. But we will see is you take in order to have that connection, which is another one of my secrets. You actually look at the person softly gazing and you see through their eyes their essence and you actually plug into and that's where the energy mm -hmm. right the electrical right. energy Correct. and then one of people say yeah but what about all the people around in this <laughs> section i said when one person feels the electrical charge it radiates out all in that section of whoever you've done that with absolutely and as having those tools as you know, because you're the expert in that area, that is so vital to have in your back pocket when you do become mm -hmm. unplugged, right? It's having yeah. those tools, yeah. like you said. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So you can, you can, you know how to get back in. <laughs> so right. engage. Breath is listen. the first one, oh, right? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, breath is the right. first isn't, one. Isn't breath the very, the easiest? I mean, yes. we always have that. Yep. And we know physiologically that that's, it's a soothing medicine that we have right at our disposal. And it's not just a, 
you know, kind of no. that kind of hiccup breath. It's got to be slow. And I like to say easy and deep, full breath. Ah, even when I just said that, my body kind of responded. So you train your body to respond to something like I just said. Slow, easy, deep, full. Ah. Yes, absolutely. Now we're all going to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's what people say sometimes. I could, they have that effect on people, you know, but yeah. I, I'd rather be that then kind of be one of those superchargers that's because uh, I think this charging that you and I are doing are is of a deeper nature. And that's what we want people to wake up to mm. is the deeper nature. Absolutely. Well, I'm 100% with you, Doreen. So now looking on the other side, how can someone engage their listeners? Now we did cover the eye contact and maybe we've touched on most of the, the the things that we can do to engage the listener. So you 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 let me know if we've already answered that question. Well, I would go back to definitely eye presence, softly, gently, because it's more of a welcoming. Uh, even what you're doing right now, the gentle smile goes along with uh, saying hello, hello out there. You know, it's just like ooh, they want to. You you become the magnet, and then the second thing is to look through their eyes and see their essence. And but you have to believe <laughs> that there's an essence inside of everyone, and right. then the one that we haven't talked about which is more about listening is help them feel like and how do you do that it's a whole technique but listen to them and have them feel like they're being listened to not just being talked at it's very subtle technique but basically how to say it maybe more um, in a way that people might understand it is pay attention to your listener so they feel seen and heard mm. Yes, And it's absolutely. not just about your words. Mm -hmm. And it's one person. It's just one. And so if it's just one person, that's another trick to get over anxiety is, hey, we're just having a conversation. Oh, here's another person. I'm just having another conversation. Yeah, it's about that connection. Absolutely. Yes. Like in your bio, you, you, you hit on something really significant, saying that a lot of the issues come from a lack of communication and understanding mm -hmm. and oh my gosh is that ever huge in today's world especially with the social yeah. media and the internet you know we are becoming creatures of uncommunicated individuals because we just don't know how to communicate with each other anymore so that's a whole nother that's a whole nother podcast <laughs> Let's put yes, it that way, yes. <laughs> really, for sure. So I'm really excited about your book. Tell us about The Seven Secrets to Fearless Speaking. I We've mentioned almost all of them. Be okay. still, be present, be attuned, be aware, be positive, be connected, and be yourself. Those are the seven secrets that I talk about in my book and I call it essential speaking because it's speaking from the essence of who you are and the cover that's being shown right now on the screen, you can see the inner diamond that's within. So think of yourself as having a jewel within you that that's where your essence is. And this whole idea about it being secrets is because, hey, nobody's talking about it being an inside job. You know, they want to give you more performance techniques. <laughs> and that's fine, for sure. You, there are plenty of people that need to get out and have those performance techniques. And it's important for media, for sure. But I work with the population who aren't really comfortable even expressing themselves, let's say, at a dinner table. So it's mm. life is your stage, I think, is what I'd like to say is why I do the work that I do is so that people can assert themselves in any situation. They have a voice. Find your voice. Change your life. Yes, absolutely. Beautiful. Yes, that was um, Shakespeare who said all the world's a stage. And yes. boy, did he know, did he 
he was so tuned in way ahead of yeah. his day. But now, you know, with science, especially now we understand so much more about the human mind and the brain and how we, we, how we function as, as humans. Yeah. Um, and we make it way too complicating. <laughs> you know, we, we okay. do it to ourselves. And that's something that's okay. very hard for many of us to accept. No, it's not my fault. That was just the uh -huh. way I was brought up. That was that was another situation. It's like yes, but it's how you frame things that are happening, like you said. So absolutely. Uh -huh. Well, Doreen, if there was one critical message that you could share with the world, what would it be? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess that's why I had my tagline: <laughs> Find your voice, change mm -hmm. your life. And that, what does that actually mean? You know, you were on my podcast, Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcasts, and there are over 125 episodes people could listen to and understand and uh, what that means, actually. What does it mean to find your voice? Because your voice, it's different at different stages in your life, or is it like you never felt like you had a voice? And so there, there's lots of ways in which you can what that means to you, find your voice. And then obviously, if it's even like returning a uh, item at a store, which I used to be really afraid to do, uh, you have a voice to do that. Mm. <laughs> right. Small steps. Absolutely. Well, tell our audience about your coaching program, um, where they can get your book. And I know that you do have a 30 minute, um, chat that's available on your your website and of course you have a podcast so just briefly tell our audience yes. where they can get all of that and this will also be available on the epic vision zone bio pages so go ahead i think the the most central place is my website doreen downing and that's d-o-r-e-e-n doreen downing.com and there are access to, I have a free video series that goes through each one of the steps as we talked about today. That's on there. And I have a quiz, a find your voice mm. quiz that I've just designed. So I'd be excited if any of the listeners wanted to sign up and take that quiz and see what we've got. And then of course, the on the website, they could get connected to the free chat, the free 30 minute chat. Mm, wonderful. All those tools and, and wonderful gifts. Um, take advantage of them because this is something we can all learn from. It's not just those who already have a voice um, because there's so much, so much insight and, and power to what Doreen is saying. And I do believe it, it, it can change. It does change your life. And it's the tools mm -hmm. that we can have for the rest of our life. So mm -hmm. one last question I have for you, Doreen, because we are here on the Epic Vision Zone, if your life were an uh -huh. epic story, what would the title be? And you can't use that subtitle, find your uh -huh. voice, change your life. <laughs> Let's come up uh -huh. with something else. So what would uh -huh. it be? Uh, well, uh, uh, Jane, I'm 75 years old. And I think that I am, I am living my epic vision. You said something uh, in my podcast last week about the importance of having a vision because that draws you forth, draws you forward. And um, this whole idea of moving without even knowing you're creating your epic vision because it it's part of what you're what you see in front of you always and so um i guess i start with um i, I don't want to say it's never too late <laughs> that isn't really the title of it but uh uh i guess i love this idea about epic vision living living your vision now that would be it living your vision now hmm. <laughs> that's perfect i love it living your vision now Absolutely. What are we waiting for? And by the way, you look fabulous <laughs> for, for your age. Not that that makes a difference, but 
you uh -huh. could tell you're lit, you're in your essence because I do believe too that uh -huh. makes a big difference on the way people appear, you know, because right. when, when you struggle uh -huh. a lot internally, you do have that that those kind of uh, you know it affects your your physical body as well. But yes, living your vision now, absolutely perfect. Okay, now you have to write the book. <laughs> Okay. So thank you again, Doreen, for joining us here today. And for information, once again, to connect with Doreen, go to the Epic Vision Zone pages where you will find her social media and direct contact information. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Jane Applegath. And don't forget to connect with me at janeapplegath.com where you can get access to your free download, The Keys to Your Dreams. Sending you much love and success. This is the Epic Vision Zone, transforming your dreams into epic success.